Hey, I'm just jumping in here for 10 seconds or so to say that if you're watching this video on the week of release, my course Unlock Live Sound is on sale for up to 50% off. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can check that out and I won't take any more of your time. Onwards to the video. Hey, what's up? I'm Andrew and welcome to Offshore Audio. On this channel, I'm bringing you tips and tricks to help you mix better live events. The other day I was at work and I happened to change a mix from pre-fader to post-fader or vice versa. And it got me to thinking that I haven't covered that yet on this channel and that's a really important skill. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how faders work, pre and post fader sends, I'll go through a tutorial on a mixer to show you how to change sends from pre-fader, post-fader and back. And finally, we'll take a look at when you might use pre-fader sends versus post-fader sends. So without further ado, let's dive in. To get a good understanding of how this all works, you need to understand how a fader works. When you plug a microphone into the mixer, it goes into the microphone preamp and you then turn it up. The sound then moves on to the fader. This is quite a simplified way of putting it, but it's just for getting the idea. The fader is used to adjust the volume of that signal level. And then by adjusting the volume of all the faders, we create a mix, which sits on our master fader and is then sent out to speakers, usually. Somewhere near the top of your faders, you'll see that there's a zero. And this is unity gain. And what that means is that if this fader is positioned at zero, it is neither increasing nor decreasing the signal that comes into the fader. So the signal level is now at exactly the same level as it was when it left the microphone preamp. If we turn the fader up, we are adding gain, we're gaining up the signal, increasing the level from what it was when it left the microphone preamp. And if we drag that fader below zero, we are decreasing the level, attenuating the signal. We are turning it down so that it is lower than it was when it left the microphone preamp. And when you look at a mixer and you adjust the faders without touching anything else, you're mixing to the master fader that's usually on the right hand side of the console. And that is then routed onto the main P8 speakers. So we're gonna call this the main mix. This first set of faders that we encounter, that's our main mix. Now let's talk about pre and post fader. In really simple terms, pre fader means that we're taking a feed of sound before the main mix faders have had anything to do with it. Post fader means that we are taking a feed of the sound after the main faders have had something to do with this sound level. But let's look at that in a bit more depth. The most common place you're going to find this is monitor mixes for a band. Now, manufacturers call these different things. They call them mixes, auxes, auxiliaries, buses. I'm gonna call them aux mixes or auxiliaries in this because that's what makes sense in my head. That's what they are. They are auxiliary or additional mixes where we are combining multiple channels to one master fader, the auxiliary master. On our main mix, setting that fader to zero meant no increase or decrease. And so what was sent to the master was the exact same level from the preamp. Straight through, no change to the master. And on a pre-fader send, we're ignoring any alteration that happened in that level. When you turn the send up to zero on a pre-fader send, you're also sending the signal directly from the preamp straight to the auxiliary mix master. So a lot of the time when we're building these auxiliary mixes, we talk about sends. And quite often you will click sends on fader. And what that means essentially is that you are sending these channels to this new auxiliary master. So when you press sends on fader, everything goes to zero again. And essentially it's a whole new mix that you are sending to a separate master track. When you use a pre-fader send, that means that all the channels that are being sent are being sent completely independently of that original mix, that main mix that we created. That means if we push the fader on our pre-fader send up to zero, it is also sending straight from the preamp, remember? Bypassing that fader and sending the exact, the unadulterated amount to the master. Now a post-fader send is not operating completely independently of our main mix. If on our main mix, we pull that fader down to minus five, when it comes into the preamp, it's then going onto the fader and it's being reduced by five decibels and then being sent onto the master. So at the main master, it's gonna be sitting there at minus five decibels. If we put our auxiliary send level to zero, it looks to the main faders, which are at minus five, remember, and that is the new standard. So you've set that fader to zero, that means nothing up, nothing down, but it looks to the original main mix and it says, oh, it's already at minus five. 
don't turn it up, don't turn it down. And then the post fader auxiliary master is going to end up at minus five. Now I understand that can get pretty confusing. So let's go through it again with some numbers to make it a little easier. I'm going to use zero to 100 because that's easy. Who cares about decibels? Just numbers, zero to 100. So you plug the microphone into the mic input and you use the microphone preamp gain to turn it up to 100. Great. On your main mix, you turn the fader to minus five. Now the value is 95 because it was 100, but it's been turned down five. So the value being passed to the master fader on the main mix is 95. So now let's do our first auxiliary mix, mix one. That's pre-fader because we set it to pre-fader. When we turn that fader up to zero, it's pre-fader, so it looks to the microphone preamp and it says 100, great. We're not gonna turn it up or down because it's set to zero. So then it passes to mix one's master bus 100 because it was 100 at the preamp, it was zero on the fader, which means no up, no down, which means that at the master fader, it's now at 100. Let's look at our auxiliary mix number two, which we're going to set to post fader. So if we turn our post fader mix up to zero, it looks to the main mix, which was set to minus five. What value is at that main mix? It's 95, right? Because at the preamp it was 100, then the main mix turned it down by five to 95. Our post fader mix is not doing any reduction or increase of gain because the fader is set to zero. So it just looks at the main mix fader, 95, and it passes 95 onto the mix two master fader. If you brought that fader down by five, it would be passing 90 to that master fader. If you pulled the channel fader on the main mix, down to zero, then the pre-fader send on mix one would still be sending 100 because it's completely independent, but the post-fader send would be sending zero because there is zero on the main mix. Again, quite confusing. So let's take a look at the mixer and I'll show you some actual examples of how this looks on the mixer. Okay, so really quickly, I'll just show you how to go about changing between pre-fader and post-fader sends on this mixer, an M32 also totally applicable to an X32, and the process is likely to be the same on whatever console. You can change the way that a bus receives sound, or you can change the way that a channel sends sound. I'll show you the first one. I'm gonna select this bus here. I'm gonna to go to home, and then I'm gonna go over to configuration, and channel sends configuration. I've set it to pre-fader. I can change it here to post-fader. So that's how we change it. So quite simply, if I want to send stuff pre-fader to this mixer, it's right now set to pre-fader. I select the mix, I'm going to use my sends on fader. If you see I turn this up, sound comes in. If I want to change it to post-fader, I turn the dial, I press the button, and it asks me to make sure. I say yes. Now I do the same thing, select the channel, fader up, turn it up. Now you see there is no sound because it's post-fader and I don't have the channel fader up. But let's dig a little deeper into this, okay? Let's look at the channel input itself. I'm gonna gain this up a bit. It's now sitting pretty, pretty pleasantly at minus 18 decibels. It's just pink noise I've got going in there. Now we talked about how faders work, remember? Zero means no increase, no decrease. So if I turn the main faders to zero, they're going to the main master. The main master is also at zero. My main meters here, I've gone up to minus 18. Look, I select this channel, the meter is exactly the same as when I select that channel. Now let's look at that pre-fader idea, right? I'm gonna take these down. This is my main mix. So that's off, there's no sound going to the master anymore. But remember, a pre-fader sound takes its level from the microphone preamp input, which I've, I've got this channel selected, we see that this input is at minus 18. That means that if I select my bus one, I make sure that it's set to pre-fader, it's a pre-fader send. I'm gonna select my sends on fader and turn my fader up to zero. You see on this bus, it's kicking about minus 18. If I take it down 20 decibels, it'll be hanging out about minus 38 because it's 20 decibels less than minus 18, right? If I go back to my main fader, I've turned off sends on fader, I'm back on my main mix. I'm turning this up and down. It's affecting the main master but you see that this send here, you can see this meter up here, it's not affected by these faders 
whatsoever. It's still affected by the mute button, so that's important. Now let's turn that back to post fader. We're going to go back to our bus master and we're going to change it to post fader. We're going to select sends on fader and we're going to turn it up to zero again. But look at this, there's nothing coming into this bus because there's nothing going to the master. And these faders here are down at nothing. If I turn these up to zero, you will see that this bus send is also at minus 18 because the mic preamp has been gained up to minus 18. These faders are doing no adjustment, zero. And the send is also at zero. So it's being sent to this bus with no adjustment. That means that this is at minus 18. If I were to bring this bus down again, 20 decibels, you'd see that the bus input here again goes down to minus 18. But watch this. If I go back to my main mix and I bring these faders down 20 decibels, you'll see that not only is my master output down to minus 38, but my post fader send to this first mix is also showing at minus 38. That is because we have reduced the fader by 20 decibels. So the microphone preamp is being gained up to minus 18. The fader is bringing that level down to minus 38, down by 20 decibels. That is now the signal being sent further to the bus because it's post fader after we have made fader adjustments. So remember, pre fader takes its signal from the microphone preamp here. P post fader takes its signal from the channel level after it has been adjusted by the main channel faders. Now, next up, you're probably asking, where would I use this? The first one is monitors on a stage. You really want that to be pre-fader most of the time because you do your sound check, you set the monitors for the band and you don't want that to change. But you know that when the audience comes in, the mix for the front of house for the audience, that main mix will change. The guitar starts playing and it turns out that the guitar is too quiet. Yeah, I know, right? So you need to turn the fader up on the guitar, but you don't want to turn the guitar up in the guitarist's monitor because then they're going to say, what the hell's going on? Why is my guitar so much louder than it was in the sound check? So you want this mix to be totally independent. On the other hand, if you're doing effects, you might be sending a vocal to a reverb because you want a little bit of ambience on the vocal. But when you bring that vocal down, you want the reverb to come down with it. You don't want to fade a vocal nice and low for a quiet song, but you still have this insane, loud, cavernous reverb that you had for the previous chorus, the end chorus of the last song. So you want it to be in relation to the fader a post fader send. And you will find pre and post fader in other places as well, not just mix buses or auxiliary sends or whatever you want to call them. You find them on direct outs or inserts. If you want to insert an effect unit into a channel directly, you might want to choose whether it's pre fader or post fader. You might also find pre EQ, post EQ, or even pre mute, post mute. And on that subject, it's important to note that when you mute the channel on the main fader layer, you mute all the auxiliaries as well. Mute is like this master button that just cuts it all out, turns it all off. So if you have a channel muted and you're wondering why you can't hear it in the monitors, that's why. So I hope that one was helpful. Please leave me a comment down below if you're having trouble understanding pre-fader sends and post-fader sends, or tell me some other use cases where you've used a post-fader send. For example, if you were mixing monitors and you used the post-fader send, why? How did that go? As always, I'll leave a link down below to free material that you can download to help you mix better live shows quicker. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. For now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.